so good evening uh, once again it's 7:30 and we are back with uh, yet another interesting session on the learning hour so today we have uh, yet another expert in the field someone who's quite popular with uh, the training fraternity we have none other than mr mehernosh randeria who is india's first and only w3 coach with a mission to help you prosper in the three w's of life that is wealth wisdom and wellness and this will make you financially mentally emotionally physically and spiritually fit so uh, mehnosh uh, welcome on behalf of learners conclave and i guess we are now all set to begin with this wonderful session on the emotional fitness gym so over to you thank you so much elroy for uh, giving me this uh, this platform welcome so great welcome everyone welcome on board happy to be here with all of you so a quick uh, start i would like to have a, a quick introduction from all of you and uh, we'll not do it by unmuting because then we'll uh, spend most of the time only in introduction because we have already 50 people on the call uh, i want you to write down in the chat box just two things your name and how are you feeling right now introduce yourself with your name and how are you feeling right now elroy excited shantanu feeling good shantana feeling good amit great natural neha mr bharat bliss par kasturi kam curious peaceful wow wow wonderful bored okay karwan <laughs> bored uh, anush is curious fantastic shital is relaxed pavan is feeling good ganesh is feeling great samuel is feeling hungry divya is feeling peaceful farida feeling happy to hear good things from you thank you janfari um, arjun sari is happy and enthusiastic feeling happy um, and get your name feeling happy uh, please put your name seema feeling good excited to learn more about the topic amruta feeling good 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 thank you rashri relax shri lakshmi okay shri lakshmi is komal excited to have session from you thank you thank you wonderful wonderful Raghavendra feeling excited good thank you if i missed your name sorry because i'm just trying to catch as much as i could Tanya Mahant feeling great nice 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 welcome welcome good to have you all and i'm feeling really excited and happy to be with you all over here because enjoying yes thank you all right so um when i asked you right now how are you feeling uh um, what happened at that time what what went through your mind when you had to suddenly think about what you are feeling so i'm now asking you about the feeling of the feeling feeling when you were trying to figure out what you were feeling what was that like connected with self manish thank you yeah what else good okay focus on self and own thinking yeah dr kasturi thank you ruchita introspection going inside tanya figuring out what to write <laughs> okay yes nobita aligned to what i was feeling yes tulsi priya mindfulness trying to exactly figure out yeah being just what i am ranjana thank you yes how to express yourself yeah shilpi mittal think, starting thinking how i am feeling yeah grounded with reality want to learn new pavan yeah curious to know something new yes wonderful that's a good beginning 
that's a good beginning that uh, we are getting in touch with our own self you know we we go through a lot of emotions don't we we are a bundle of emotions being human beings how often have we paused and just kind of reflected into ourselves that what exactly am i feeling what is that emotion which i'm going through having said that we are emotional human beings how often are we taking that chance to connect with ourselves to be self aware in the first place to find out well what am i feeling by the way or am i totally ignoring the emotions and saying okay i got to do this i got to finish this accomplish this that achieve so many things or see there are two kinds of people in this lockdown over here i'm just trying to generalize into two categories i'm sure there will be across the spectrum but uh, one category who is uh, feeling what's there to do now i don't know when things will open up till then it's like just sitting idle or getting bored that's one end of the spectrum and the other end of the spectrum we have people who are constantly trying to do things as if um, you know there's only so much time left of the lockdown and there is so much to do because once the lockdown opens up there is there'll be so much back in the routine that we will not have time to do all these things that we are doing right now so where are you in the spectrum where are you second you yeah, are doing so many things that you are trying to catch up on the things yeah thank you we'll see ms priya thank you shilpi second option second shantana trying to make the most worried okay second happy with the lockdown okay trying to balance both third one second okay good second option keeping busy nice 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 good balancing both see it's as i said it is a spectrum you may find yourself sometimes at one end sometimes at the other end it's only natural veena yes trying to invest in knowledge good thing to do now just because you are now some of us are actively focused and i think most of us in this classroom are actively focused on doing something or the other in this time utilizing time to upgrade yourself for learning while that is important it's okay if one or two days we are not that active isn't it it's okay if one or two days we feel just wanting to relax or chill what are you feeling at that point and the bigger thing is that are you even aware that what you are feeling so we are going to see how we can get in touch with our own emotions and with that welcome to the emotional fitness gym so let me ask you that um, the the topic i'm sure it sounded a bit intriguing to some of you and what do you think is emotional fitness all about what is emotional fitness if you were to define emotional fitness what how would you put it improve our health maintained okay raj balraj kumar what else control on feelings yeah what else being neutral okay okay what else being self aware and balanced being mentally fit resilience balanced thought mind management mind over body sit pragnya i love that sit pragnya yes what else being in touch with what we are feeling in the present and aware yeah wonderful being aware and acknowledging yeah what is sukmit sukmit thank you experiencing the feelings maintaining emotions okay great great good good responses maintaining patience here and now what it all boils down to is if we take emotional fitness on one side of the spectrum and emotionally unfit on the other side of the spectrum emotional fitness is a space where you are in control of your emotions where you are aware firstly that what you are going through what you want to go through and what your emotions are making you do at that moment what is it what is happening in your mind body 
as a result of the emotional situation that you are in on the other end of the spectrum we have people who are just going through the day getting pulled in to by by emotions into different things and not even realizing that that emotions are ending up controlling them so firstly emotional fitness is about being in control of your emotions rather than allowing your emotions to control you and when we talk about being in control of emotions most people think that being in control of emotions is like you know if i'm feeling angry i should not show that i know most people feel that if i'm feeling stressful i should not um, come out as being seen as stressful and that's where people go for anger management or stress management i want to tell you one secret over here you know stress management can actually be fatal it can be dangerous and deadly because we don't want to manage stress after we have been stressful that okay now let me give you a simple example think of a time when you were walking on the road obviously in the pre lockdown days when you were walking in the road and suddenly someone kind of uh, bashes into you and you feel a rage of anger and in that rage what do you do if i tell you to man manage your stress you may say okay i will i will control my rage i will i will not bring it up right now then the question is that where do you eventually go and bring it out what happens tell me give your response in the chat box another another example if you are in office and something is happening in office things don't go out well and you are controlling suppressing yourself in in that moment you are under the garb of stress management okay. where is all that going to come out if not in that office if not in front of that person who is bumped into you where is that going to yeah you are going to bomb out where where are you going to react where are you going to lose the self control where is that going to happen yeah blast at the next person or at a weaker person yeah it will impact the body of course so there are two ways it's going to work one is we will blast at people who are weaker than us because since we could not react to in front of our bosses we will find the next possible target <laughs> or we might blast at people at our home our loved ones or family members who have nothing mm. to do with that situation and they are wondering are isko kya ho gaya you know they are trying to care for you and you end up blasting on them and let's say you you are you have become perfect in stress management you don't blast out at anybody what's going to happen you're going to build that suppressed feeling within you and that's going to eventually result into your health issues or other things in your mind issues and that's not going to bring out the best in you that's not going to bring out the best um, person in you so emotional fitness is about being in control of your emotions rather than allowing your emotions to control you so we've done the six introductions where i asked you to introduce yourself with emotions some of you put in the chat box that you are feeling good you are feeling great let me tell you that good and great are not emotions it's nice they are they are nice positive feelings but i would like you to get in touch with yourself further and pinpoint an emotion we will come to this further as we go ahead a uh, very quick intro of myself um elroy has already introduced me and instead of putting multiple slides to talk about me i have this one page mind map which which covers uh, what i am i have, currently i am a w3 coach trainer and speaker where i help people to um, succeed in the three w's of life by keeping them fit emotionally physically financially and mentally and after 18 years of corporate experience i've done all these certifications emotional fitness gym being one of them so you can read more about this in the website and wsvcoach.com i'm not going further into this detail let's come to the point we were talking about stress 
and what happens in situations of stress a bit background about what happens in the brain in this diagram you are seeing the prefrontal cortex that is the thinking brain it is the center of the thought and reason which considers the impacts what you are what reasoning the logic part comes from the prefrontal cortex the hippocampus contain uh, co connects the emotional context but the key part over here which often takes over in case of stressful situations is the amygdala it's called the emotional watchman because it reacts immediately in the situation and in the situation the role of the amygdala is to protect us from danger and therefore there are two ways in which it attempts to protect us are you able to see the slide everyone yes yeah yeah no, yes we yes. can yes. Oh. yeah we can see yeah. thank you okay please mute your cells yeah and you can also mute your cameras because uh, it may that occupy some bandwidth if the videos are on so the amygdala is known as the emotional watchman because the role of the amygdala is to protect us from danger and the way it protects us from danger is by triggering a emotional reaction of either fight or flight which means when we are in a stressful situation we may end up either bursting out venting out immediately and fighting the person or we may go into a shell and withdraw it's like you know if a tiger is there if you feel that you can't fight the tiger what you will do is you'll run away so that is what flight or fight is now in a stressful situation this is what happens so on the left hand side here you have the low emotion where you are calm and relaxed where the amygdala is also in control in stressful situation where there is high emotion it could be anger fear excitement love hate disgust frustration in this case in the high level of emotion the amygdala takes over and when the amygdala takes over there are only two responses as, as i said earlier either you fight or you flight and in that takeover of amygdala it shuts down the prefrontal cortex so prefrontal cortex jo hamara thinking brain hai that stops functioning so i got a feedback to speak in hindi also so i'll try to blend in hindi and english so hamari sochne ki jo shakti hai jo brain us pe kaam kar raha hai wo attack ho jata hai and then we are not able to think clearly because wo feeling control kar leta hai wo emotions overpower us and this is known as the amygdala hijack when we get taken over by our emotions some examples you may be able to relate to this do you know who this is we have all seen this in the field of sports zidane yes zidane. zidane yes yeah yeah well sportsmen are supposed to be are supposed to control their emotions be emotionally cool but even in the worst of situations this is what can happen to the best of people let's take an example closer to home we all know this example how sharukh khan was banned from the one khade stadium it's like you know you never know you may think that you are emotionally sorted out you are a cool and calm person but kabhi toh moment aa jata hai where you don't realize and your emotions take the better of you therefore when we say when we talk about uh, stress the the way to address stress the way to manage stress is not about managing the expression of stress because if you manage the expression of stress it will eventually come up in the wrong place at the wrong time being emotionally fit is about managing the experience of stress and this is one distinction i want you to understand over here expression versus 
experience. The situation is going to be the same. The, there, are, there are going to be stressful situations around you. How do you um, experience that? How do you intake that and look at it in a different way so that the expression is just an outcome of the way you have experienced it? So again, let's go into further detail about what happens when you are stressed. There are two parts of our brain. One is the sympathetic response, other is the parasympathetic response. Sympathetic response is governed by the amygdala, fight or flight, bago ya maro. And the parasympathetic response of the parasympathetic nervous system of our body covers all the other important functions of our body, which include digestive, reproduction, um, endocrine, our hormones, the rest, the rest system, all of that, the breathing is governed by the parasympathetic nervous system. So in stress, what happens is, our hormonal system secrete the cortisol. And to address the cortisol, the body needs glucose, needs the energy. And that rush of glucose for energy, what happens is that it reduces our insulin production. And that's why our sugar is high. It narrows the arteries, it increases the heart rate. So basically, in moments of stress, our paras parasympathetic nervous system shuts down. What happens is, what we, these are some symptoms. If you're trying to figure out, am I emotionally stressful, stressed or not, these are some of the symptoms. Uh, yeah, we respond differently in different situations. That is true. So some of the symptoms are emotional hunger, when we don't realize that uh, whether we are hungry out of a physical need for eating something, or whether it is emotional, whether like, like right now, out of boredom, or out of some agitation. Guys, please, please mute your mic. I'm doing that here right now. Okay. Yeah. So emotional hunger, which should result in weight gain, obesity, which ultimately results in uh, diabetes, digestive ailments like irritable bowel syndrome, increased heart rate, blood pressure, cardiovascular diseases, immune system suppression, fertility problems, chronic fatigue, chronic fatigue syndrome, where you feel that throughout the day you have not done anything but still you are feeling tired. And these are also symptoms of a sudden cardiac arrest, which is different from the blockage of the normal way of heart attack. So if we were to quickly understand what is the impact of stress, if there was a way to figure out a monetary impact, I want to share with you a quick calculation, a quick formula to figure out how do you find out whether there is a monetary impact of stress. So these are some of the components in the formula. Firstly, I want you to take the average number of hours that you would be spending in a day experiencing negative emotions. It will be different for different people. Just think about it and note that down. Let's call it X. So let's say it's two hours or four hours or one hour or half an hour, whatever it is. Be honest to yourself. We are not going to check this. Second, take the average number of working hours per day that you have. And let's call this Y. For the purpose of this exercise, I want you to take a last uh, six months period or over one year period. What is the average number of hours per day that you spend in stressful situations or in negative emotions? And um, what is the total number of working hours that you have in a day? The third parameter is your desired annual income. Your desired annual income based on your current potential right now. What do you think that you should be earning right now? This is not an activity in goal setting. So I'm not asking you a desired annual income five years from now. I'm saying, ideally, how much can you earn kar sakte hai abhi? Kar, karna chahiye. And then take this formula. Ki jitne ghande aap 
नेगेटिव इमोशंस में रहते हो डिवाइडेड बाय टोटल नंबर ऑफ आवर्स इन द डे मल्टीप्लाइड बाय योर आइडियल इनकम जो आपका होना चाहिए डू यू हैव सम रफ कैलकुलेशन विथ यू एवरीवन जस्ट फोटो येस इन द चैट बॉक्स नो आशीष एनी डिफिकल्टी विन कैलकुलेटिंग दिस लेट्स टेक एन एग्जाम्पल ओके सो थैंक यू राहुल शिल्पी बट स्टिल लेट्स टेक एन एग्जाम्पल मेक इट क्लियर लेट्स ऑन एन एवरेज यू स्पेंड अराउंड टू आवर्स इन अ डे इन नेगेटिव इमोशंस एंड योर एवरेज वर्किंग आवर्स इन अ डे आर एट आवर्स इन अ डे so that ratio will become 2 out of 8 which is 1/4 your annual income desired annual income based on your current potential let's say it could be 20 lakhs that given your current experience education mindset you should be earning 20 lakhs in a year i'm taking a rough estimate so now putting 2 divided by 8 which is 1/4 into 20 lakhs that becomes How much? One fourth of twenty lakhs is five, five lakhs. lakhs. Yeah. Five. So five lakhs per annum, you can say is your roughly your uh, amount of money that you are losing as a consequence of you experiencing negative emotions. This is the thumb rough thumb rule. there is if you ask me what is the scientific way of proving this it's not scientifically precise or accurate but still it will give you a rough idea of the amount of potential income that you are losing as a result of being in negative emotions and if you were to identify ke really itna 5 lakhs in what way in what way would that 5 lakhs come come up what in what forms yeah if it is less good so there is, there could be two reasons why it could be less one is maybe your desired annual income that you put is less or the second reason is that your actual number of hours that you are spending in negative emotions is less the second reason is a positive way of looking at it if that is true then good congratulations let's say if you are spending only half an hour out of 8 hours in uh, negative emotions so that is like you know one of one upon 16 yeah so we were talking about in what forms this could be this monetary impact one is you know some people resort to substance abuse drinking smoking because of the negative emotions stressful eating and obesity impulse buying retail therapy we all heard about it right health issues productivity issues that you are not being able to operate at your productive best your optimum best and that could be a another issue as well loss of business imagine you showing up for a client meeting because of um, some stressful situation which has happened at home and you don't uh, perform your best in that meeting most likely you are going to lose that prospect and not only that particular prospect even the future referrals that you may have got if you had got that business and relationship issues yeah so shital also mentioned it could be in form of human relations being compromised achieving less than potential relationship issues you can't even quantify it monetarily so these are some of the ways which kind of substantiate the monetary impact now this is the saying by tony robbins the best time to solve a problem is before the problem becomes a problem and that's why when we talk about stress management it's not about how to express that stress but how to experience the stress and that is what emotional fitness gym is about yeah so tulsi priya is asking that the negative emotion being angry and someone also and not showing it 
see not showing it is the expression part of it i am going to work on the experience part of it which is being angry and that's what emotional fitness gym is about we saw this model earlier the pluchex model of emotions which is we don't even realize that what are the spectrum of emotions in each category that we go through and it stops us from thinking properly it shuts down the prefrontal cortex so in the emotional fitness gym we are going to see a set of few exercises where we will see how to activate the prefrontal cortex more how to activate the thinking brain more so that more energies get focused on the thinking brain instead of the feeling brain and your thinking brain ke bhi do parts hai we have the left prefrontal cortex and the right prefrontal cortex the left prefrontal cortex deals with the positive emotions when we look at certain things in a positive way for example the way we look at the lockdown we may look at it by a way of getting a break from the routine and getting a chance to work up on our uh, knowledge our skills polishing our best uh, capabilities that is the positive way of looking at the lockdown the negative way of looking at the lockdown is worry anxiety fear oh my god what will happen to us uh, i hope i don't get this disease or i hope that uh, people remain safe and uh, what will happen to my income source once i'm back so even in the prefrontal cortex there are these two parts and like working out in the gym when you work out on both the parts of your body you don't just work on the left muscles and ignore the right muscles in the emotional fitness gym also we work on both the parts of the prefrontal cortex the positives as well as the negatives that is the left as well as the right which means training your prefrontal cortex to function more from the left and reframe more from what the right is giving you reframe means putting a perspective which could be different from what the right prefrontal cortex is trying to show you and why are we talking about gym we spoke about emotional fitness but why are we relating it to a gym so let me give you the analogy of the the physical fitness gym and the emotional fitness gym away what kind of people go to the gym people who want to lose weight people who want to gain weight and even people who are already fit and want to maintain their fitness levels so basically the gym is for everyone same way the emotional fitness gym exercises which i'll come to are also for each and everybody in the world everyone can do it even if you are going through certain stressful situations or not being able to deal with them you have the emotional fitness gym for you even if you are already fit these exercises will help you to keep your uh, emotional equilibrium maintained throughout like i mentioned earlier the brain the gym is for both the sides of the body likewise the emotional fitness is also for both the sides of the brain in the gym the form and technique matters you can't expect to just go and work out and um, work out in a wrong posture not bother about your back when you're doing your bicep workout it's not going to work right it's going to result in injury the exercises that i'm going to bring up right now in emotional fitness gym are also they also require certain form and technique so for them to be applicable and work on you you have to follow the form and technique and consistency in the gym you work out but the post workout nourishment is equally important your protein intake your diet now when it comes to your emotional fitness what do you think are the post workout nourishments can you throw some ideas what are post workout nourishments when it comes to gym when it comes to emotional fitness
good thoughts happiness thank you ashish positive thinking yes positive books yes meditation books staying calm so doing your meditation getting rest affirmations very good very good i'm loving the responses that you're giving being aware of your company consistency absolutely listening to positive music is also there breathing visualizations affirmations feeling of gratitude breathing doing something that we are passionate about yes yes even if you are busy doing things that you may not want to do but still finding time for your hobby forgiveness staying away from rumor wonderful wonderful responses creative work yes these are actually your post workout nourishments when it comes to emotional fitness so just doing that exercise in the gym is good but it's not going to be enough till you give the right kind of nourishment to your brain as well consistency matters and yes like the gym give it time when you join a gym you don't say that okay i worked out for one week but nothing is happening chalo mere kaam ka nahi hai mere bas ka nahi hai mere se nahi hota hai mere results nahi aa rahe you don't say that right to get the results you need a consistency you got to give it time so one is consistency and be consistent over a period of time the exercise i'll tell you is somewhat to be done on a regular basis daily basis you got to do it for a span of 6 months 1 year and get into that habit of doing that regularly that's where you see the results most importantly the gym is not curative if a person is injured or having some trouble in the body muscles or bones you don't take that person to the gym you take a person before the person gets into injury likewise the emotional fitness gym is not curative it is immunative the entire idea of the emotional fitness gym is to immunize you towards stress towards these viruses of stress which are even more harmful than the covid 19 and immunity over negative emotions is going to work on immunity physically as well people who are immune towards negative emotions they fall ill less often and even when they do the impact of their illness is less and there is faster recovery all right so ready for more ready for the exercises yes type yes in the comment box if you are ready for the fitness exercises excellent excellent great 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 good to see all of you are ready so let's start with the first one i already gave a demo of the first exercise when i did the introduction when i asked you what are you feeling right now and this exercise is called name that emotion from time to time take a minute to pause and reflect what what is the emotion i'm going through right now what am i feeling and Uh, our, our brain loves shortcuts you know so brain will come up with shortcuts yeah i'm feeling good i'm feeling great or i'm feeling bad a uh, good bad ugly are not emotions <laughs> so what are the emotions you are going through yes ashish emotion is energy in motion but you got to pause for a while to check what is that energy what is that energy giving you so right now we are like almost 40 minutes into the session um what is the emotion you are going through type in the com comment box determine good determine type in the comment box eager calm very good relax yeah good excited as well yeah good thoughtful very good so lot of emotions get in touch with your emotion the point is do we even know how many emotions are there 
I'm going to share with you a list of emotions. You'll be amused to see this. It's called the feeling vocabulary. So even the emotion that you picked up, you can actually go into that. If you're feeling thoughtful, for example, there is a column for thoughtful over here on the screen. What do you mean by thoughtful? Are you feeling challenged? Are you feeling curious? Are you feeling illuminated, informed, interested, pensive, reflective? It's like, you know, you have a color red, but within red, there are um, so many um, shades of red. So get into that pinpointing that what is that shade of my emotion right now? Challenged. Good. Thanks. Thank you. You want more? So many more, so many more vocabulary of emotions. Appreciative. Yeah. Thank you. So this is the first exercise in emotional fitness. And the purpose of this exercise is that when you pause and ask yourself, what is the emotion I'm going through? For you to come up and identify that emotion, your energy has to shift from your feeling brain to your thinking brain. And that is the main purpose. Yeah, so Rahul, if you can't see your emotion, make up your emotion. What would you like to call it? Right? Yeah, so the idea is that within your brain mechanism, you shift your energy and focus from the feeling brain to your thinking brain. Ideally, when you do this in stressful situation, let's say you are in a rage, you are getting angry, but you pause and you ask yourself, what's happening to me? Instead of reacting with the outcome, with that, with that emotional burst of anger, if you pause and ask yourself that, what am I uh, feeling right now? What is the emotion I'm going through right now? And you may say, okay, I'm feeling rage. Which emotion, which shade of rage? Uh, maybe I'm furious or I'm agitated and irritated. Now, for your brain to describe that, For your brain to describe that, it requires that energy to move to the thinking brain, which in fact dilutes that flight or fight response that you have, the flight or fight reaction. And then by the time you think, okay, I'm feeling irritated, what should I do about the irritation? You have already milded, milded down the impact of that reaction. Because now that emotional is going, that reaction is going to come from a response to that emotion and not just an outburst. Okay, so Sheetal is asking that uh, if we take the feeling of anger, yeah. So the English words are emotion are interchangeably used. Do they mean different or are they the same? Good question and very good question over here. They are like different degrees of emotions. And again, the, the extent of that emotion could be different for different people. For you, it could mean, for you, for example, aggravated could be more intense than annoyed. But for someone else, annoyed may be more intense than aggravated. It's your own uh, description, your own extent, your own degree. So this chart applies to what you are going through. What, what is your degree? What is your range? And what you call it will be different from what the other person calls it. The first step to emotional fitness is self-awareness. And this is what we are doing. So it's not having a barometer with other people. Oh, are you also angry the way I am? No, maybe that person is annoyed and maybe your annoyed is different from what his annoyance. Great, thank you. So yeah, if you're petrified or terrified, <laughs> what does it mean for you? What is petrified for you and what is terrified for you? But good, that's the kind of 
awareness that I'm talking about. Now, as I mentioned, that this will come to you to help when you do it in stressful situations. But imagine right now, if I tell you to practice this only in stressful situations, it's not going to come naturally, right? And therefore, the practice needs to happen in regular activities, in your regular day-to-day -day life. From time to time, you need to just pause and reflect on this. And only then, you will be able to apply it when you are actually needing that. Again, concept of gym. Um, you may work out and build up the strength that which you will use when you have to lift up something heavy, probably. In actual life, you have to shift some furniture or help somebody pull something down. That is where you'll actually use it. But if I tell you, don't go to the gym, use your strength only when you need that, then it's not going to work, right? So the same way, this exercise should be done regularly. So the prescription here is that do it as often as you can. Find out your own routine time or even if you decide like uh, three times in a day, do it. Now, the thing that is essential for you to do this is to be in the now. Find your present moment rather than going into that previous moment or the next moment. You know, So that is your now. In that moment, what are you experiencing? And to do that, the best technique that works for everybody is breathing. And this is the second, act, second activity, second exercise in emotional fitness. Breathing mindfully. We don't even realize that we are breathing, right? We have, it is something that we have taken so much for granted. And breathing is again a function of our parasympathetic nervous system. And especially in moments of stress, it gets shut off. We breathe shallow. We breathe not that deeply and it doesn't, it's not helpful at all. So breathing mindfully is about taking time specifically to practice breathing. Now, how should you breathe? What should happen to your upper body, to your chest and torso as you breathe, to your abdomen as you breathe? What should happen? Should it go in? Should it go out? When you breathe in, what should happen? Depends on how we think. Depends on how we think. Okay. All right. So most people think that sas under lena matlab pet under lena. Right? That's not the case. Your chest should inflate outwards. Your abdomen should inflate outwards. Because when you breathe in, the stomach will go out. Yeah, you, it's like breathing in when you're blowing in balloon. You mute yourself. So, when you breathe in, your chest should expand. Your diaphragm will contract and your chest will expand. And when you breathe out, your chest contracts. Best example is look at a baby, an infant baby breathing. The entire stomach will come out as they breathe. Because to take in that lungs, that to take in that air, your lungs have to expand. And then when you breathe out, your frame, your um, ribcage, your lungs, again, contract. So, um, first and foremost, we need to get, get this right. Now, inhale and exhale, there is also a rhythm to that. How much time should you inhale for and how much time should you exhale from? So let me ask you this. If I tell you to take a deep breath, inhale, okay? Come back, that we are just seeing the inhalation part now separately. And now if I ask you to exhale, that deep breath that you have taken, exhale. 
let go of the air in the normal natural rhythm which one is going to happen faster in the normal natural rhythm will you take more time to inhale or will you take more time to exhale normal normal rhythm normal rhythm what's easier to do what's easier to do is it easier to exhale or is it easier to inhale exhale yes very good it is exhale. easier to exhale बिकॉज एक्सेल में क्या करना है सांस छोड़नी है ना एक झटके में छुप जाएगी उसमें कौन सी बड़ी बात बट जब आप इनटेक करते हो तब इज नो टेक यू लॉन्गर बिकॉज टू ग्रास मच अमाउंट ऑफ एयर नाउ दिस एक्सरसाइज इन इमोशनल फिटनेस जिम द एक्सरसाइज ऑफ ब्रीदिंग रिक्वायर्स यू टू डू जस्ट वन थिंग एक्सेल लॉन्गर देन यू इन एल so let's say that if you are taking um, five counts to inhale inhale for five counts hold for two counts and then exhale for seven counts let's do that i want everyone to participate in this just sit comfortably feet on the ground chest up uh, upright back upright shoulders behind be comfortable yeah number can change but i want to do this demo with this number right now so i'll count inhale 1 2 3 4 5 hold exhale 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 मतलब आपको सात बार एक्सेल नहीं करना है यू हैव टू टेक सेवन काउंट्स टू एक्सेल फॉर एग्जांपल इफ यू कैन लुक एट मी वो सांस छोड़ने को थोड़ा ज्यादा टाइम लेना है देन व्हाट यू हैव टेकन इन इफ यू आर कंफर्टेबल विद फाइव टू सेवन वेरी गुड इफ यू फाइंड दैट अ बिट अनकंफर्टेबल यू कैन मेक इट थ्री टू फाइव वॉट एवर द काउंट the guideline over here is that inhale count should be longer than your exhale count if you are super comfortable with 5 to 7 you can even increase it to 7 3 and 11 whatever works fine for you why is this important we are getting control of the parasympathetic nervous system something which is a involuntarily move, involuntary movement like exhaling we are getting control over that just as an involuntary reaction to an emotion that also at, at times is involuntary right but the most involuntary part which is the breathing once we master that we are on our way to master the um involuntary reactions to emotions as well and yeah as sheril is saying it is scientifically proven that this breathing pattern helps you to calm down and helps your better concentration now prescription for this exercise din mein sath baar ye cycle seven cycles karni hai and din mein teen baar minimum karni which means first thing in the morning when you get up do this cycle seven times 5 to 7 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 7 times one time at night as well before you sleep and one time whenever you like consistently at a given point of time during the day this is bare minimum if you can do more even better are we clear with the prescription everyone say yes in the comment box if you are clear okay i'll repeat 5 to 7 ki cycles seven such cycles so right now what i did with you right now repeat it seven times continuously so the moment you get up let's say if you want to brush and be fresh and then sit and do it 
it's as good as a powerful meditator exercise yeah so 5 to 7 7 times ka ek cycle and then do this 3 times in a day three times is bare minimum yes three times a day with seven times in each time very good so seven such cycles in each time 5 to 7 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 5 and then do this three times a day are we all clear any questions put the question in the chat box good now this has the power of giving you at least 3 hours of mindful sleep scientifically proven one cycle of 7 times is going to refresh and rejuvenate your mind as if you have taken a 3 hours power nap test it out and share with me share your experience with me okay so the minimum prescribed prescription is ओके सोमिया इज आस्किंग व्हाट इज 11 आई सेड 5 टू 7 की एक साइकिल हो सकती है इफ यू आर कंफर्टेबल विद दैट काउंट यू कैन एक्सटेंड दैट यू कैन मेक इट इनहेल फॉर 7 काउंट्स होल्ड फॉर 3 काउंट्स एंड एक्सहेल फॉर 11 काउंट्स इफ यू गेट कंफर्टेबल विद दैट यू कैन इंक्रीज दैट इवन मोर यू कैन से इनहेल फॉर 9 काउंट्स होल्ड फॉर 3 काउंट्स एक्सहेल फॉर 15 काउंट्स इट्स लाइक गेटिंग द कंट्रोल ओवर योर ब्रेथ Yeah, Rahul, what you are saying, even that is fine. Four, four, and six, and then two holds, even that is fine. The key equation over here is exhale count should be more than the inhale count. Again, minimum prescription three times in a day, but do it as often as you can. Especially before you are getting into a so-called stressful situation. Let's say you have to give a presentation to a client. or you have to do a training program you have to do some um, uh, interview before you get into that give yourself a time to do seven cycles of 5 to 7 and it's going to rejuvenate your brain and make you fresh for and ready for that um, next activity uh yeah rashmi that's right seven cycles together is equal to 3 hours of a power nap that's the effect of it and you you test it out and let me know what you feel about it. okay so that is the second exercise um we'll move on to the next one So, Elroy, a uh, quick check on the time. How much time do I have? Elroy, are you there? Where is my co-host? Hello. Okay, I'll continue. I'm assuming that I have your permission to continue. Yeah. Okay. It's still nine, I believe, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. So, moving on to the exercises, neurally inspired exercises. So, by the way, these exercises are based on principles of neuroplasticity and neuroscience. and i bring in some element of uh, neuro linguistic programming nlp as well and the idea is to exercise the brain not just the body and activate less of the right prefrontal cortex which is your um, the side which deals with the negative emotions and more of your left prefrontal cortex which is the side which deals with your positive emotions so now i want you uh to do this exercise it's going to be um, activity that you will do right now and i'm going to give you 5 minutes to do this 
for this purpose i need you to bring your paper and pen i'm sure you have something with you which you because you're making notes but if not i'll give you um, 30 seconds to grab your paper and pen yes s vadarajan wonderful you are an nlp master practitioner good to know that you i am a nlp your trainer as well so good yeah please bring your pen and paper everyone ready okay super now i want you to write a story and this story is going to be from your own life and you don't have to go back too much into your life to figure out a story or i don't want you to write your life history or autobiography over here um this technique by the way is based on cognitive reappraisal technique i want you to write about a story of some negative emotion that you have experienced recently recently it could be as recent as the last 24 hours or last 48 hours it could be something that you know just didn't make sense to you you don't like you didn't like it happening and maybe someone at home said something to you demanded some attention for you and told you or kuch uh, taunted you tatana mar diya kuch ke are aisa kiya you tum hamesha aisa hi karte ho or maybe they didn't give you some time that you wanted of theirs one negative situation from the last few days only okay think about that and i want you to write it on one page if one page means agar aapne a4 page liya hai to fill up one one a4 page and as the instruction over here says one page short not one page long which means just keep it to that much don't overflow it even if you feel like crossing just stop over there and main thing i want you to write this in the third person so for example if uh, rahul is writing about it then and you are saying that okay you went through this and this happened you will write in the text you will in the story you will write uh, rahul did this and this happened with rahul and um, priya said this to rahul and therefore rahul felt like this and rahul felt that nobody ever listens to priya sorry nobody has ever listens to rahul and um, what so write what all so if rahul is writing rahul will write what all is happening to rahul are we all clear about this so good rahul also has done nlp masters wonderful so everyone clear you will write this in the third person if priya is writing priya will say okay priya did this priya was um, waiting for her chance at the bathroom and it was locked and everybody be, being at home priya never gets a chance and how it makes priya feel i'm just giving random hypothetical examples so you know, pick something which is relevant which is um, the right one and current for you all right so 5 minutes for this start writing any questions please ask before you start i want you to write down what it made you feel what it made that person feel whom, about whom you are writing aap khud ke bare mein nahi aap khud ke bare mein hi likh rahe ho but aap use third person sambodhit karke likh rahe ho naam se to wo bande ko kaisa laga jab ye sab ho raha tha uska feeling bhi aapke ye story mein aana chahiye uh, i would prefer you write up to a page four five lines to thoda expand karo what is happened okay start writing i'll be back in five minutes i'm not going anywhere i'm right here start writing if you have to handle two more two more two moods simultaneously means we can't figure it out write about both the moods 
yeah you can write he and she also if you so every time you don't need to put your name so uh, neha did this and this is what it made her feel and then what happened to her you can do it that way yeah write about your emotions what it made you feel what were your emotions how you felt in that situation so write about what happened how you felt what emotions you went through kya hona chahiye tha wo bhi likho ye hota to aur acha hota agar usne mujhe wo time de diya hota 1 minute hi to manga tha kahan pura din manga tha Hey, good. Some of you are done. Once you are done, put in the chat box that you are done. Those who are still doing, yep. Good. I'll give one minute more. good good all right and your time is up okay so now 
you have written about um, the negative emotion and what you felt about it now we are going to do a self audit of what you have written we are going to audit your document your story in three parameters first one i want you to look out for the negative emotions that are there in your story words have an emotional charge so you would have written something like you know it made me it made him or her feel angry upset irritated sad um you have such words in your story just type yes if they are there any kind of negative emotional words yeah yes good so okay good good now good that is the first step you know getting self aware now the idea is not to discard and say you know you shouldn't have feel felt negative negative nahi hona chahiye tha aisa nahi hai to hai we accept that the only thing i'm asking you to consider is that what is that degree of that negative emotion that you have written is it possible that you can find an alternate word which can be used in the same context can you hear me yeah i'll repeat is it is it possible that you can find an alternate word which you can use in the same context and that word also reduces the emotional intensity of the feeling aisa kuch ho sakta hai like uh, one of you had put annoyed you felt annoyed okay you have written that uh, she felt annoyed annoyed ki jagah pe dusra kaun sa word is jaisa jo ho sakta hai jo less intense ho but still it fits yeah it could be upset again as i mentioned earlier that the emotional intensity will vary and it will vary from person to person yeah did not like yeah so instead of saying i was annoyed that she was he was annoyed you can say he did not like it or he was uncomfortable he felt uneasy he thought differently yeah तो ये जो इंटेंसिटी है विल वेरी फ्रॉम पर्सन टू पर्सन नाउ फॉर समबडी मे बी फॉर यू अपसेट कुड बी लेस इंटेंस देन अनोइड सो यू यूज दैट बट फॉर समबडी एल्स अपसेट मे एक्चुअली बी मोर इंटेंस देन अनोइड सो देन यू डोंट यूज अपसेट मे बी मे बी इरिटेटेड इज लेस इंटेंस फॉर यू सो यू यूज इरिटेटेड सी नथिंग इज चेंजिंग अबाउट वॉट एक्चुअली हैपन देर we are not also trying to underestimate or undermine your emotion we are only saying that same context mein kaun sa word use ho sakta hai jo aapko emotional intensity kam kar de yeah frustration can be replaced with not comfortable yeah so good lesser word for depressed could be worthless mm you find out it could be something which suits you it could be uh, depressed could be um, less happy again don't take my suggestion that i'm only giving some um, words from the vocabulary but what works best for you take that a word for depressed and worthless yeah could be uh, less happy use the emotional uh, the feeling vocabulary you something from here this is the pulchik model of emotions feeling low see yahan pe this is the actual psychological intensity like for example rage is most intense than anger than annoyance or grief is most intense than sadness than pensiveness but whatever you can figure out whatever you can fit in which makes you feel which reduces your emotional intensity
i will be sharing the feeling vocabulary with you so when you do this exercise from time to time uh, use that as a reference and see if you can replace it with a word which makes you feel less intense on that aspect okay are we clear so if you were to replace that word how would it make you feel just mentally re rephrase that statement that you have put in your story and what changes how do you feel put it in a chat box about that particular situation that you have put how does this part make you feel less stressed out yeah felt better situation became less intense nothing changed out there the way you looked at it the way you felt about it makes you feel a little better and less stressed about it now why this works is again the science behind this is that the words that we put by default are just you know kahan se aate hai wo words from our day to day life random word whatever we've seen most of we've not even bothered to check the emotional intensity of that but without while we acknowledge that you felt that the same thing could be put more appropriately if you put a lesser or a milder word over it the perspective changes it makes you bit, make a feel a bit lighter yes good good so deepak to answer your question the colors and the circles that's from the plutchik's model you can look up on that on the net not part of emotional fitness i'm using this only as a reference for the emotions that we pick and choose from it but yeah it has a science and study behind it you can look it up okay yeah so rahul yeah th there was no problem but he actually made it a problem the rahul in the story made it a problem yeah yes so this is the first audit point over here the second thing i want you to check is there would be certain generalizations in your statement in your story the words to spot out for are all all always everyone does this to me no one ever listens to me i am never appreciated everybody else is given a chance so all these words which tell you something like a generalization aisa kuch hai aapki story mein So see point A was the emotional intensity reduction. You will get the recording, so I'm not going back on that because we are running against time now. So yeah, so meaning the time when the situation, the emotions rise spontaneously, maybe thoughtlessness, thoughtfulness could bring about a change. Yes, yes, we are working towards that only. But what thoughtfulness comes to come? This is what we are doing. So yeah, so if you have these words, they tell you that there are some things in your mind that you have formed as a generalization. That this is how it is always happening. ये तो हमेशा ऐसा होता है सब लोग ऐसा ही करते हैं समटाइम्स दीज वर्ड्स आर स्पेसिफिकली देयर समटाइम्स दे आर इंप्लाइड यू मे नॉट से इट यूजिंग दीज वर्ड्स बट यू मे से दैट यू नो दैट्स हाउ इट इज यू मे यूज दिस लाइन दैट्स हाउ इट इज और यू मे से दैट अदर फैमिली मेंबर्स टेक इंपॉर्टेंस ओवर मी नाउ द वे यू हैव सेड इट यू आर मीनिंग टू से के एवरी टाइम दिस इज व्हाट इट हैपेंस right if there are no generalizations very good but if there are then this is your second audit point take these generalizations in context of a negative emotion if you are finding generalizations in context of positive emotion let it be it is still empowering for you it's working for you we don't want to touch that but jahan pe ye negative emotion mein aata hai i want you to examine kya ye hamesha sach hai is it what always happens like this only when you examine it from this point of view i want you to find out some counter examples in your life maybe you have said that nobody ever listens to me i want you to think was there a time when they ever did listen to you and you may say yeah ek do baar to listen karte hai but kya usme kya but the point is to again 
reduce the intensity of that to bring it to it's not always it could be some some of the time it could be most of the time but most of the time is still different from always the emotional intensity the burden of that that you are carrying oh my god hamesha mere sath aisa hi hota hai mere sath hi kyun hota hai that changes to har bar nahi kai bar aisa hota hai and that makes me feel okay there are sometimes when it's not like that let me also highlight and focus on those things Yeah, so I would like you to look at it. If you would rewrite your story, what would you change? Where would you change from um, all the time to most of the time, every one to some of them, most of them, or just a few of them, maybe? Right. So I want you to examine that. It could be a big generalization or a small generalization. Yeah. Okay, that is the second. audit point i want you to examine and the third one is are there any rules and expectations that you have put in your story how will you find out the rules and the expectation which are the words which will give you insights into that yeah lots of them thank you shitul sometimes sometimes they are explicitly put by words like should must have to need to ये ऐसा ही होना चाहिए था उसने मुझे ध्यान नहीं दिया बट उसको ये करना चाहिए था ना दे शुड हैव डन दिस आई शुड हैव गॉट माई लाइम लाइट ओवर देर आई शुड है बट वेर आर दीज रूल कमिंग फ्रॉम दे आर रूल्स दैट यू हैव मेड why he should have called you who says that he should have called you i just want you to examine on it okay maybe he should have maybe but i want you to look at it ki kya hota agar wo what if this rule was not there in your life can you relax some rules in your life can you accept some things that they are without imposing them as a rule on that me who should have called me उसका भी टाइम है उसको हम कॉल करना होगा तो वो करेगा और इवन रूल्स कुड बी ऑन सेल्फ आई शुड हैव कॉल्ड आई शुड हैव स्पोकन मोर टू माय पेरेंट्स व्हिच आई डिडंट डू ओके बट नाउ इंस्टेड ऑफ बीटिंग योरसेल्फ टू इट हाउ कैन यू रिलैक्स दैट रूल या यू शुड हैव डन इट यू डिड योर बेस्ट हाउ कैन यू हैव ब्रिंग दैट सेंस ऑफ ग्रैटिट्यूड एंड फॉरगिवनेस इनटू दिस एंड यूज दैट टू रिलैक्स द रूल्स बिकॉज़ यस लाइक डॉलर इज सेइंग um expectations are leading to disappointment so how about reducing that expectation in the first place i want you to ask yourself these questions what would happen if that rule is satisfied what would happen if that rule is satisfied and how do you know that it will, it will happen that way only what is that absolute certainty you should have called me what would happen if he would have called and how do i know that it is absolutely certain that that would have happened what would happen if that rule is not satisfied what will happen if he doesn't call what's going to happen and even if the worst case comes to your mind that this would have happened i want you to ask that how do you know that that's what will happen how are you absolutely certain that that's going to happen yeah shrinivas maybe nothing going to happen बट ये जो हमने रूल्स बना के खुद को दबाव में रखा है प्रेशर में रखा है दूसरों को प्रेशर में रखा है इमेजिन हाउ मच इट इज बिल्डिंग द स्ट्रेस ऑन योर सेल्फ इफ दोज रूल्स आर नॉट फुलफिल्ड या एब्सोल्युटली फ्री नवास इट्स दे आर ऑल सेल्फ मेड एंड सेल्फ क्रिएटेड रूल्स सो दिस इज द थर्ड एक्सरसाइज ऑफ योर इमोशनल फिटनेस जिम राइट योर स्टोरी and examine it on all these three points and the exercise is not over the call will get over in 10 minutes but the exercise is not over your homework is to rewrite your story take the same incident that you have written take the same third person and rewrite it by changing these three factors 
Number one, replace the emotional words with ones of lower intensity. Number two, observe the generalizations, replace them. And number three, rules and expectations. Rewrite your story with the revised way of life. Wonderful. Thank you for your feedback, um, Mini. Your story is transforming in your own head. Wonderful. But I want you to express, experience this by writing this down. Feel that transformation by actually putting paper to pen to paper and rewrite what you have already written. Please, please, please do that. And the the way we look at things when you change that. Everything will be changed by ourselves, right? Okay, quick repeat, quickly repeating the points. Write your story, one negative situation from last week, one page short, write in third person. Replace the words of negative intention, negative emotion. Replace the universalization, what the generalizations that you have, and replace the rules. You will get this recording, so I'm not going back into repeating all this. Now, the prescription for this exercise. Yes, this is also an exercise in emotional fitness gym. So do this once in a day. You can do it at the end of the day and reflect on the last 24 hours and pick up some negative emotion that you went through. Write it down first the way you would. The uh, so I'm also a chartered accountant, right? And there is a rule that the auditor is different from the operator, from the accountant. So when you're writing, don't do your audit. Okay. So do it in two separate phases. When you're writing, you write it the way you would normally write. Write it the way you would normally put your negative emotions. You would normally put your generalizations. Don't, don't audit when you're writing. Write it down. Finish that phase and then audit it with these three principles and then rewrite the story. This is an exercise to be done daily at night. Reflect on the last 24 hours till you will realize a point will come when in the moment, when that actual negative experience comes in the moment when you're experiencing it, the way you will look at it will start changing. The way you will start um, uh, experiencing it your intensity of negative emotions, your own generalizations, your own rules, all that will change as a result of this regular daily exercise. Okay, so I want you to do this. Okay, a few questions. Uh, what is the difference between feeling and emotions? Yeah, Anil Sayal also asked, uh, checked on this earlier and Ashish is also asking me now. So for the purpose of emotional fitness gym, no difference. Psychologically, we can go into the um, theory of it and come up with the finer aspects. But right now, the purpose of the emotional fitness gym is to keep you in control of your emotions. So what you're feeling, what you're experiencing as emotion, bring that out and work on that. So that the next time you go through it, you, you experience it differently rather than trying to control the expression of it. Yeah, wonderful. I'm glad you are all here and thank you for the feedback. Just a few final touch points. Um, the same thing I want you to also apply on your self-talk, on your communication. What you tell yourself is what you're going to become. You tell yourself no one likes you you will catch that same generalization in your self-talk. You will catch those same emotional intense words in your self-talk. So you can actually apply this on a regular basis in your to catch yourself in the self-talk as well. A very powerful self-talk to have is you are much more capable than what you think you are. Start your day with this. So thank you. Capture your negative self-talk. Uh, last thing, all these slides were okay. Last mantra, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. What do you think this stands for?
A, B, C, D, E, F, G is anybody can do emotional fitness gym. So please do it and practice it daily, regularly and share with me your feedback, how you are experiencing it. Thank you very much. Any last few questions, we can open it up. Is it that one? <laughs> yeah, any questions, any thoughts, any feedback? Hey, thank you. Yes. One of the best sessions I've attended. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for having a wonderful session, which is uh, very helpful in our practical life. Thank you, Thank sir. you, Meshwa. Thank you, Karvan. Thank you, Srinivas. Thank you, Seema. Thank you, Bharat. Thank you very Hi, much Mahesh. for the wonderful session. Okay. Hi. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So goodbye then. Have a great uh, day ahead and especially in these times, apply these techniques. And Rahul, you want to say something? Yeah, I wanted to. Yeah, Rahul, yeah, please go, go ahead. ahead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, hi. The third uh, actually transformed the feeling totally. The third exercise transformed the feeling totally. Yeah. Wonderful. I'm so happy to know that. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much. It was a very nice session. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye, Dollar. Kashmira, your hand is up. Want to say something? Hi, Manosh. Yeah, hi, Seema. The best, the best part was A, B, C, D, E, F, G. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice session. Thank you very much. Thank you Thank so you. much, Manosh. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. Yeah. It was an excellent session. When Thank is you. the next Please. session? So the next session is tomorrow at 7.30. Okay. Oh, so in case you would like to attend a full-fledged session of Manosh Randere on the Emotional Fitness Gym, uh, okay. his contact details have been mentioned on the screen. Right. So you can always connect with him. Very helpful okay. person. So. Anytime you want to connect with him on uh, emotional fitness gym, please go ahead. Uh, one request also from uh, Learners Conclave is in case you have any feedback about your sessions, whether you like it, didn't like it, certain areas that you would like us to improve. Uh, my contact number is on the screen along with my email ID for all those who would like to pass on their uh, feedback. Please do so. We are looking forward to hear from you. So tomorrow, uh, so before I go into tomorrow's announcement, thank you very much, Mernosh, for uh, yet another wonderful session uh, on the learning hour. Thank and you, uh, to inform all of you, tomorrow's session is uh, going to be um, understanding your handwriting. So it says seeing through your handwriting. Very interesting session for all of you to understand patterns, behaviors, and how are they correlated with your handwriting. And how you can actually make a drastic change in your life by simply altering your signature. So I hope to see all of you at 7.30 p.m. tomorrow. Can you send the link, please? The link will be sent uh, tomorrow. You will get the link. Uh, the message as well as the flyer will be sent across in the day. Right. In case you have not been uh, provided or you've been uh, trying to get onto the system through Facebook or LinkedIn, you can connect with me. My number is mentioned on the screen. Uh, please connect with me on WhatsApp and I will send you the link uh, directly. I will add you onto a broadcast group so that uh, while these sessions go on till the lockdown is on, so most probably till May 3rd, uh, you will keep getting messages about the title of the session. Right. All right. So uh, thank you very much. Thank uh, you. One and all. And hope to see all of you once again yeah. tomorrow at the learning hour. Elroy. Thank yep. you. Hello. Yes, Rahul. Uh, who is the trainer? So we have uh, Lena Suneja. Lena Suneja. Okay. All right, uh, Mernosh. Thank you very much. Thank and you, everyone. Goodbye.
Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. It's uh, I think so. We are good to wind up for the day. So I am now ending the meeting. Thank you very much. Good night, all of you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.